Welcome. In this video, I'm going to be going over the master cam simulator. So basically what you do after every operation, and especially at the end of programming your part is you want to simulate what you've programmed and you want to make sure that you've done that correctly. So to do that, what you want to do is come over here, select your toolpath group, and that will enable selecting all the operations and you'll select right here, verify selected operations. So what that will do is open up the master cam simulator. So this is the master cam simulator. And basically what you're doing is simulating the programming and making sure that everything is done correctly. So let's go over that from the start. First, you have the option to actually back plot where you would just see the tool come in and you would see the tool path or verify. In 99.9% .9 of cases, you wanna make sure that it's under verify. This way you can see your stock being machined at the same time. Now you have the option of selecting colored. If you do that, you will notice that there's a bar down here that is entirely yellow with all these little lines that are splitting all the operations from the next. So those lines are different operations. If you actually select color, it will separate the operations for different colors. So most, most of the time I will actually be using colors. This way I can separate all my operations. There is a precision bar right here on the bottom. So the more it is to the right, the more precise your part looks or the smoother it looks and there's a speed bar on the right obviously the faster you want to run it the faster you go to the right and if you want to see something slower you would move it to the left we're going to keep it at medium right now on the right side is all the information about your moves and the toolpath for example this is move one out of 51 151 and it will tell you that you're doing the first move is a rapid linear move it's a facing operation this is the facing operation and there's a lot of information about the tool and about everything. So you will notice that this operation will take you an hour and eight minutes to finish. All right, so this is all the information about your toolpath. You can also select the down arrow over here and you can have it floating or auto hide it or close it. You can also have it pinned to the right side. If you actually move over here and select it again, you will see it pop up. And if you actually go back and uh, unpin it, or pin it, it will go back to normal. And you would select move over here or collision, depending on what you want to see. Now we're in the collision report right now. So if you wanna change that, you can close it or auto hide it. It hides it on the right side. And you can go back to the move list over here and select that. Now you can select pin over here to pin that back to the right side. And you'll also see that you can go between the move and the collision report right here. The collision report will tell you every time the tool or anything basically collides with the truck jaw or the holder or the part itself. So let's go to the main menu over here, back to home and let's go over everything. So now you have the option to actually tell MasterCam to stop at a collision. And if you select the down arrow, you can tell it how you want it to stop, whether the operation change or by tool change or by collision or by tool inspection. You can also tell it every time it makes an X change to stop, a Y change or a Z change, or a specify different values that you want it to stop when it gets there. All right, so for collision check-in, you can also tell it what you want it to check, colliding the holder, the cutting length, the shoulder, and the shank. You can see that now the holder and the cutting length are enabled, and for turning, we have the holder and the insert checked. All right, the last one down is the material cutting. If you select that one down, you can see that we want what we want to see is the holder, shank, shoulder, and cutting length, and same for the turning, the holder, and the insert. Okay? Now for tool components. If you select the down arrow here, this is where you verify what you want to see during your uh, master cam simulating process. We have everything selected here. Basically, we want to see the holder, the shank, the shoulder, the cutting length, and in turning, the holder and the insert. Over here is visibility. What do you want to see? Now I'm going to go ahead and zoom out so you can see my entire screen, including my holder and my tool. So this is going to be my starting stock in orange. You're going to see my nomen, this is the X, Y, Z, and my axis, which is the Y, X, and Z. Now in most cases, what I like to do is turn off the axis and turn off the nomen. This way I can concentrate on my holder, my tool, and my stock. And you have the option of turning on the toolpath, for example, the initial stock. Okay, I'm going to turn that off. 
and also the wireframe if you want to see the wireframe which is going to be actually inside of your part so you can't see it right now all right you can also turn on the fixture if you want to see the fixture if you don't want to see something for example the tool if you click on it once it will make it a translucent if you click on it again it will disappear same goes with everything so if you click on the stock for example once it will make it translucent once again and it will disappear leaving the wireframe if you want to turn off the wireframe you can select that and that turns off the wireframe over here so this just depends on what you want to see now do you want the focus to be on the tool the workpiece or multiple workpiece work basically everything on the screen i usually like to have it on everything all right so we're going to leave these uh, for reading from default saving from default and reset the default so if you select reading from default you would want to have something saved first an xml file for example if i like my settings here and i want to save them i would simply select save to default and i will save them as my own default one that i could load every time now the default file is mastercam simulator default if you want to select basically have all your options so that you have them the same way every time you run a simulator you would set everything up and then you would come over here and you would save to default you can save it and override the default or you can create your own and have that run okay and you can also reset to the default operation as well so video over here is a new option in MeshCam 2017 and allows you to record a video of your part. So you can come over here and select record and it will say microphone is on recording will start in three, two, one, and now it starts recording. And now you have the option to stop it. So you can select stop and now it will ask you to save the file if you wanna save it somewhere. So it records it as a .mp4 file and you can save that and view it later. So that's really nice whenever you want to basically run your operation and record it at the same time and it will record that entire video and maybe you can send that to the client or customer to view and verify some things. And there's some recording options over here as well, whether you want to record in high, medium or low quality, a full window or the active window. So let's go over here to view. So view allows you to control what you want to see. For example, the collision report, that's just a collision report on the right side or the move list. So you can go between the collision report and the move list over here, as well as those tabs. You can do fit to screen to fit everything to screen, isometric view, so you can place everything in isometric view. And you can also switch between top, right, front, and all the views. There's also back, left, and back, bottom, left, and back. Now you can choose to have this as a single view, two views, where you can select one of the views, for example, and switch it to the right or isometric. You can do two views in column, side by side. That works out best whenever you want two views. And even four views. And you can have each view, for example, be something different. Okay? And isometric. So I've done isometric, top, front, and right view. Now I'm going to go back and put it into the single view. Now there's a motion control button over here. If you select that button, if you go over it actually, there should be a message that pops up. There you go, select motion controller rotation position. So what you will do is select a point and then you can rotate about that point. Okay, that's all that it does. And then sync views, you can also have that checked and unchecked, but I like to have sync views selected and it synchronizes views between MeshCam and the simulator. So when you have this checked, if you actually have MeshCam open, you'll see both views on here and as well as MeshCam. And let's go to the verify tab over here. So this has to do with the toolpath and operations. So operations, you can actually tell it if you want to view the current operation uh, or segments of the operation. You can also have it trace your toolpath, follow the toolpath or both. So the tool as it's machining, it follows the toolpath, for example, or, or it can create one or trace over the toolpath. You can also have a restrict drawing or stop restrict drawing, depending on where you want it to stop. You want to have leads or points and we're going to go over most of these when we actually start creating some parts uh, because we'll actually be using some of these so going over those in detail right now uh, it doesn't make sense because you won't remember them so it's good to go go over them when we're actually using them you can also enable vectors over here displays vectors for multi-access or wireframe tool to show exact position of the tool or wire 
You can also compare. Comparing allows you to compare weights and colors. Okay. We'll exit out of that. You can also select to keep chip and remove chip. Now those are some nice features because after you finish machining, there sometimes are features or chips that are basically hanging in midair. What you would do is select remove chip and you would select on the chip that you want removed and it will disappear. We'll actually be using that in one of our exercises. You can also measure points, distance, or clear all. You can also be clipping depending on the view. Let me go ahead and forward this all the way through so you can see your part. I'm going to zoom in and select, for example, XY clip, clip top, and that will separate half of my part. You can do clip bottom and it will clip the bottom half of my part or select all. You can also do XY XZ clipping plane. So it clips the left side or the right side or off and also do ZX clipping plane, the front or clipping the back or off. And also over here, you can click on three quarter and decide what quadrant you want to see. For example, I want to see the first quadrant, the second one, whatever is in red is what will be cut off basically, the third quadrant or the fourth. And go ahead and select off to go back to normal. Accurate zoom is really nice after you run a program and you zoom in and something may not be as smooth, for example, right here. If you select accurate zoom, it will actually generate a very smooth look for that. Now, if you zoom out, you'll notice that it actually only focuses on that part and you will have to select reset zoom to go back to normal. You can have turbo mode selected and even the true thread so you can see the true thread as it's, mach as it's machining. And you can have the option to show the edges or not show them if you like as well. Okay, so last but not least, we're going to go over here to file. So under file, you can actually save the stock after you're done as an STL file. Okay, go back to file over here and go to options. So here's your options. So you have the options to do a lot of things over here. First under general, number of moves 10 to display and number of moves after is 10. So it, basically it shows 10 moves at a time every time it runs your part. The tolerance is set up to be 6,000 and collision tolerance and save STL tolerance to be 0 0.001. Collision check and you want to check collision against fixture and workpiece as well, you would have those checked. The simulator engine, since this is a 3 axis part, we want 3 axis selected. If you have a 5 axis part, you want 5 axis selected. And you can actually check to always use a 5 axis engine. Interpolate steps, we're going to leave this as 0 0.04. Now you have the option here to dis disable adaptive quality. So the quality is not as great, but they will run a lot faster. And then also enable start. Enable start allows the part to actually run as soon as the Mastercam simulator loads. When Mastercam simulator loads right now, you have to press play for it to run. But if you have enabled start selected, and I'll show you what I mean, you will, it will actually run on its own. So let's go ahead and select that for now and go to graphics. So graphics allows you to control all the colors on your screen. The milling, the holder color, the shank color, shoulder color, and even the cutting length color. And you can choose an opacity, whether you want to barely see it or have it a solid. All right, we usually like to keep it around 50%. We'll update that to 50%. So also for the turning, for the stock color, remember the stock always starts with orange, the initial stock, what we started out with, the workpiece itself color, the fixture color if you have one, even the machine uh, opacity. There's no color for the machine, but just the opacity of how much you want to see it. The toolpath is usually yellow, and all the retracts and feeds are usually in blue. And you can also control the line width for that as well. The loop by, we're going to keep it as operation. And these are the loop colors, and you can actually change them as well. For example, my first operation is yellow, second is blue, third is purple, and that's exactly what those are. Yellow, blue, purple. And you can actually change them to whatever you like. And the 4 5 axis tool vector, we're going to keep it as orange, length is 1, and line width is the same line or the first line width, not the thicker ones. Go ahead and select OK. I'm going to go ahead and select Yes to save, and I'm going to uh, uh, basically update the Mastercam simulator, or we can call this VT Pros because I've enabled it to start automatically. So what I'm going to do is exit out and go ahead and run my simulator, and you're going to notice right away it starts out by machining my parts 
And that's because right here under file and options, I have enabled auto start. So you can enable that if you want as well. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and select cancel. And this concludes going over the MasterCam simulator.